The department has a campus clinic, the University Speech, Language, and Hearing Clinic, and that's one portion of the services. And that is um, speech, language, and hearing services here on the campus. Um, but we also have a community outreach program, and that is the program that um, I've been working with most closely, and that is in the, out in the community. So we have several sites that provide speech, language, evaluation, treatment services in the community. We do have some outreach with the Third Ward, and we did uh, a collaboration with the Houston Independent School District nurses this year to provide some training for them. Uh, we did that in conjunction with one of our faculty members here. We also do some services in the East End, which uh, the East End of Houston, so it kind of is extending the university community there. Uh, we do have a preschool that we provide services there, preschool for children whose parents are in a homeless shelter and going through homeless um, services and rehabilitation services, so we provide services to their preschool. Um, and also we have a contract with the city of Houston in two separate um, health centers or city of Houston health centers, one in the fifth ward and one in the east end. And the city allows us to have space there to provide services to individuals in those communities. As far as what is a communication disorder, or who, who are we serving or what people have uh, you know use our services it's really a huge variety it's um, we see speech language pathologists can see people from uh, from birth to the geriatric years and so it's really a range um, typically people in the kind of birth to three children in the birth to three range would be seen for um, developmental problems or uh, things like Down syndrome or um, maybe he uh, congenital hearing loss at birth um, in a variety of developmental disorders. And then, of course, the preschool and school age population is a huge portion of, of the population that we see. And this can be from uh, language disorders, articulation disorders, phonological disorders, hearing problems that result in speech or language problems, and um, language and literacy problems as well. Once you get up to the adult age, there's really um, there's a variety of of things too that speech pathologists work with people and that could be um, different difficulty in speaking, swallowing, or using language as a result of a head injury or a stroke or a degenerative disease like um, ALS or Alzheimer's. Graduate students who are enrolled in um, clinic practicum complete their first year of therapy practicum here on the campus and they have to be supervised a certain percentage of time by somebody who's a speech pathologist who's licensed and certified. So this observation area allows us to um, watch the students and supervise them as they are, as they are um, performing their therapy. Um, we also have the um, Landro digital play analyzer that allows us to digitally videotape the session so that the supervisor can watch them either at a later time or record them and keep clips of them for, for teaching. Well, I think it's been a great benefit. Uh, I think, you know, we have, we have a really dedicated faculty and uh, tremendous, you know, excitement and involvement in the department and um, the, the research faculty is very, um, works really closely with the clinical faculty and supervisors who are providing the services, the direct services. And I think that that has benefited our students by seeing this, this sort of uh, working together of uh, research and clinical service delivery. And I think it's benefited the UH community because we have, you know, we have students that use the services, use these services in the greater, you know, UH community. So, um, I think it's been a nice uh, working relationship. <laughs> a student can get involved in a couple of different ways. Um, a student could, we have a, we have a student organization, uh, NISLA, the National Speech, Student Speech Language and Hearing Association. Um, so students could be involved that way. Uh, through NISLA, there's a lot of uh, volunteer opportunities. So somebody who might be a non-communication sciences and disorders major, but might be interested in 
in working with individuals with communication disorders, there's volunteer opportunities through NISLA. Not a lot of people know about, uh, about the field of speech language pathology or communication sciences and disorders. As far as my area of interest, I'm, I'm primarily interested in developing community programs that really target the needs of the community because providing services is not a one-size-fits-all. It's, it's, you have to see what does your community have, how can they access services, and um, what do you need to provide in order for those clients and parents to be successful. So that's an area of interest for me. Another area of interest that I have is um, in looking at um, learning disabilities and um, how those manifest themselves in uh, adolescence and um, as well as uh, another area is early identification of speech and language disorders in the preschool population and how early identification and remediation helps with school readiness and bringing children that have speech and language problems up to the level of their typically developing peers so that they can enter into school with their typical peers. I'd say my philosophy as a, as a clinician and supervisor in this field is you have to know what your client needs and, and what they want. It's easy for, for me as a professional to look at somebody and say, okay, this person needs this, this, and this, and this. But if the client doesn't want that or they can't do that, then, or it's not important to them, then you're never going to be able to achieve that. So it's, I think it's my philosophy is taking a look at what somebody needs, what the parent or client wants and what they feel is most important and sort of blending the two of those together. I think speech language pathology is such a, a broad and diverse field and it's very, um, it's very rewarding I think both for the people that practice it as well as the individuals that, that uh, seek it out. <laughs>